everybody, welcome back to the channel. And today's video is gonna be kicking off yet another series here on the channel. This one is going to be focused on Figma. And I recently just switched over to a design stack of Figma and Webflow. And I'm absolutely in love, so I wanna share some of that content that I'm learning, some pro tips and tricks here on the channel for you on your next Figma project. And today's is going to be focused on the amazing feature in Figma called Auto Layout. Let's get into it. Let's load up Figma here and get started. And you will notice one of the first unfortunate pieces of Figma, one of the few knocks that I have on Figma since I started using it a couple months back is that it doesn't have dark mode. I'm a dark mode convert. I love it on every possible thing that I can get it on. Mac OS, I use dark mode on everything. As you can see with my toolbar up here, I use dark mode in Sketch when they brought that out. I use dark mode in Illustrator. I'm just not a big fan, especially in situations like this where I'm trying to create a video and you can see the glare on my glasses and on my face or when I'm on a Zoom call and you got this glare going on. Just not a big fan of the light mode approach on any application. So I'd love to see this added on Figma in the future where we get a full dark mode here. And you can change it over here on the background. So if you're not aware in Figma, when you are clicking on any element, it essentially changes this panel over here to be contextual to what you are working on. So for here, if you just click on the background, it will show some other things here in the future, like all the different styles and the components that you have access to in any given Figma file. It allows you to change the background. So nothing's on the canvas. So all we're seeing is background and we'll flip it to 444 so it's a little darker for the video and helps things pop a little better. Let's start off here with some token button text. So we'll do button, very creative. The word button, you see this a lot in design systems where they put it on top of the button. You don't know what to put on there as a label, so you just throw a button on there. So that's what we're gonna do for today. And this is achievable in other programs like Sketch and, and whatnot in different ways, but not quite how Figma pulls it off which is one of those, again, aha things. When I was using Figma, I was like, wow, this is such a time saver and such an amazing feature. Before I started using Figma, what I would have to do is come in here, select both. I'd have to manually add a background here. I'd have to center it vertically and horizontally, make sure everything is just how I like it. In some programs like Sketch, you could create a uh, symbol out of this to where you can reuse it across elements. But the problem with those is when you start dragging down, let's change this to something more interesting, like a uh, green maybe. There we go. And in case you don't know this, if you hold Command and Shift as you're dragging, it drags and duplicates for you. If you just hold command, it will allow you to drag anywhere. But if you hold that extra modifier of shift, it will keep it nice and aligned. So before I started using Figma, what I would have to do then is say I wanted to do a second button. Well, this obviously doesn't work uh, at all. <laughs> you, you have it over uh, flowing the edges here, just doesn't look good. And what you'd have to do before is drag this, Make sure you size it. And then this might be a little different of a space than this. And they have built-in tools sometimes where you can move it around and see little uh, measuring things there. But more than often, what I've probably done 200,000 times in my life on different projects is I would create a box. Okay, this is 11 pixels. Let's make it 10 pixels. All right, then I'm gonna come over here, size that, and then I bring this, oh, that, that's not quite long enough. So now we need to bring that out. Okay, now, now it looks good. So I just use these like little mini boxes as just ways to measure stuff. And so now I'd have to come down here to second button. I'd have to drag it over here. So you can see how this becomes a giant pain in the butt. It just wastes a lot of your time. It's not efficient and it's not scalable. If you come across to a third button, even though it's close to the same size, now you have different padding. So now I'd have to drag this out and it's just not very efficient at all. So with Figma, what is cool is we can create button here again. And now if you hit shift A, which is for auto layout in Figma, it turns this into an auto layout container. So you now have this frame around it and let's name this button. And this frame can be changed colors back to our semi green color. Oops, I grabbed the wrong one. We'll change the fill. And we will change that to our green color. So now we have the same button. Cool. Took much less time just to even do that. It built the box around it for us. And we can come in here now with auto layout and say, well, I'd like 12 pixels of padding on the left and right, and maybe only eight on top and bottom. Cool, again, makes it much quicker. But here's the magic of Figma. Long button number two. 
Don, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. I can't tell you how much time this would save me because now you can create a component out of this. You can drag and drop. You can say, I only want button A and button B. Done. And at one single change in the interface, you can quickly say, well, maybe I want six on top and bottom and I want 20 here. <sighs> All right, and one other pro tip here, this is a can't miss pro tip, is let's get back to our button here. We've got our good old apply button. Auto layouts can contain other auto layouts, which can be very powerful. So here we have our button, and if we do the old shift day trick, we can now see that an auto layout is also created around this auto layout. So let's name this button container. Cool. And let's give it a background here of white so we can see more clearly what's going on. So the nice thing is this auto layout has separate configuration to this auto layout. So let's say we only want two pixels here and maybe five here. So what you can do now is copy and paste inside of this auto layout and it keeps this frame or artboard, depending on which program you came from, uh, it keeps this in place and it automatically adds it for you, sizes here, and you can see this little uh, grid here icon, this little stacked grid icon, that's what tells you that this is an auto layout component. So now what we can do is also go horizontal, and this is probably more of a common use case here, is you might want something like an apply and cancel button. And we'll make this cancel button gray. So now you have an apply and cancel that is a single component, which you can adjust the sizing and the spacing of. You can also adjust the sizing and the spacing of each individual auto layout item. So super useful. And here's another awesome tip is that you can click on this and swap positions. Uh, I don't believe Sketch had things like this. Or maybe I just didn't take the time to learn them. I know Illustrator and things like, uh, like that don't have uh, features like this. So I was kind of blown away when I found this one and you can drag and drop to swap positions. This gets super useful when it's like a long list of buttons or something like that, where you really need to reorganize. You don't any longer have to drag and drop and say how far apart is, okay, it's seven. This one's seven. You know, it, it's just, this was so inefficient before. And now this is such a huge time saver. So if you can learn how to use auto layout, I think it's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to make your Figma workflows much, much more efficient. All right, so hopefully you got some value out of this. Auto layout can be super powerful when you are using it in Figma just to speed up your workflow and make you a much more efficient designer. I'm gonna cover a lot more of these Figma-based videos here on the channel as well as Webflow, so make sure that you like this video and subscribe to the channel and then hit that bell if you wanna be notified of other videos on the channel like this one in the series as well as my Webflow series and all the other thousands of series that I seem to have running right now. Thanks again for joining me and until the next video, I'll see you then.